Hello everyone. This lesson is going to be on genetic information and the language surrounding genetic information. In this lesson, I'm really going to be focusing on the genetic information that you find inside of the nucleus of a cell. But just keep in mind that there is genetic information that you do find in some other structures as well. So inside of the mitochondria, there is a small amount of genetic information. If you're a plant cell in the chloroplast, there is a small amount of genetic information. The genetic information that you do find inside of the nucleus is arranged into what are chromosomes that we will be talking about. And a chromosome is a long, continuous, linear strand of DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. So if we go down to the bottom of this picture here, that is what it is showing is the basic overall structure of DNA. And it forms what is referred to as a double helix, kind of a twisted ladder structure that we do have. Um, you should realize as well that the DNA that you find, the genetic information that you find inside of the mitochondria or the chloroplast, inside of archaea or bacterial cells, it is a little bit different. Instead of linear, it in fact is circular. But it's still made up of these building blocks, and the DNA is made up of the building blocks that are referred to as nucleotides. And for the chromosomes that we do find in humans, it is a polymer made up of many, many of these nucleotides. In fact, we're talking millions and hundreds of millions of nucleotide monomers building blocks in length. So the longest chromosome, chromosome number one, it's over 200 million nucleotides in length. And the smallest one, which is uh, chromosome number 22, it is 56 million nucleotides, or as we say, base pairs or steps, uh, steps in the ladder in length. So we're talking about very, very long strands of DNA that do make up the chromosomes. So this first term that we do have here, chromatin, is referring specifically to the structure of the DNA when a cell is not dividing. The picture that we see right at the top, which is labeled as a chromosome, this kind of X-shaped structure that we see here, we don't see DNA in this form very often. So in this case, the DNA, the chromosome, is truly visible. We can see it with a light microscope, and we could count how many of these chromosomes there are. But the only time that we see a chromosome when it is condensed in this form is when a cell is dividing. The rest of the time when a cell is not dividing, it's just carrying out its normal daily activities. It's in a phase which is referred to as interphase. During interphase, Again, the cell is just carrying out its normal activities. The chromosomes are not condensed because they do need to be read. So instead of being in the condensed form, the chromosomes are in the form of chromatin. During interphase, when the cell is carrying out its normal activities, it's not dividing, DNA is in the form of chromatin. So what does that actually look like? Well, the chromosomes are actually made up of two things. They are made up of the DNA. So in this picture that we're taking a look at in the middle here, this is the DNA that we see here. This is the DNA that we see here. And down at the bottom, of course, the DNA that we see here. But chromosomes are made up of something else, and that is proteins. So all of these circles that we see, these yellowish circles that we see here, they're labeled as histones. But histones are proteins. So chromosomes are the combination of proteins and the DNA. As we'll see, what actually codes for the genetic information is not the protein, but it's the DNA. But the proteins play, play an important role. And what it does show in this picture here is that the histone proteins, what they are involved in is the packaging up of the DNA. These very, very long strands of DNA, they do need to fit into the nucleus of every cell, and that requires some packaging. So what it does show starting at the bottom, the DNA that we have here, it shows that it's wrapped around these histone proteins. So when we have the DNA that's wrapped around these histone proteins, the pictures that we're seeing in the middle here is what is referred to as uncondensed chromosome. So it's the condensed chromosome that's at the top. That's when a cell is dividing. Everything that we're taking a look at here this is uncondensed, 
and this is now what we refer to as chromatin. The one at the top is a little bit more condensed than the one closer to the bottom. So the one at the top is so tightly folded that really the information, the instructions that we do have in this DNA, is actually not accessible and it can't be read. In order for the information in the DNA, and that's really what the DNA is, is instructions, in order for it to be read, we do have to have the DNA exposed. So both of these forms are referred to as chromatin. This one at the top, more highly folded, not really readable. The one at the bottom, the more usable form where it can be read, the information can be used. And if you were taking a look at this underneath a microscope, underneath a powerful electron microscope, it kind of looks like this, a long line and these sort of bumps along it. So these bumps that we see along the line, here it has it in quotation marks here, beads on a string. This is the DNA that is wrapped around the histone proteins. So this is an indication that it's in this form of the chromatin. So chromosomes, again, when we talk about a chromosome, what it is is a long, continuous strand of DNA. So each different organism has a characteristic number of chromosomes. When we're talking about humans, the magical number is 46 chromosomes. If we talk about other organisms, they typically have a different number. Our closest living ancestor, by the way, uh, chimpanzees and bonobos, they have 48 chromosomes. So if we take a look at this picture here, this is a picture that is visibly showing the chromosomes. We can see them. So this would be a cell that is dividing. We can see the chromosomes. These chromosomes are not in the form of the chromatin, but they are condensed chromosomes. This particular picture here of the chromosomes and the way that it is arranged, this is referred to as a karyotype. So it is a snapshot, a picture of the chromosomes, which is arranging the chromosomes starting at the upper left-hand side with chromosome pair number one, going to, on the lower right-hand side, chromosome pair number 22, and then the last ones at the far lower right-hand side, these are the sex chromosomes. All of the chromosomes except for sex chromosomes are referred to as the autosomes or autosomal chromosomes. If we're talking about humans then, this is pairs. Chromosomes are arranged into pairs. Chromosome pairs one through 22 would then be the autosomal chromosomes. So in humans, yes, we talk about 46 or we talk about 23 pairs. And those pairs, you have two of each. One of them get come from each one of your parents. So if we take a look at the one that I circled for chromosome pair number one, this one here may have come from the father, and this one here may have come from the mother. So you have two copies of each one of your chromosomes, and the language that we did come across before, if you have two copies of that particular chromosome, it is referred to as diploid, or the abbreviation is 2N, two copies of that particular chromosome. So in this karyotype, we have arranged the chromosomes, or they have arranged the chromosomes, going from the longest chromosome pair, which is chromosome pair number one, and then they get shorter and shorter and shorter until we get to the shortest of the chromosome pair, which is chromosome number 22. And then we have the sex chromosome. So the X chromosome is actually kind of long. The Y chromosome is uh, considerably smaller. It is the Y chromosome that does depend, does determine gender. So because there is a Y chromosome that we have here, that means that this would be a male. If there were no Y chromosome, then it would be a female. In the case of females, there are two X chromosomes, so we could truly say then that this is a pair as well, and a female then truly does have 23 pairs of chromosomes. When we do talk about a male, the X and the Y chromosomes, they're actually not really a pair. So in some ways they do behave as a pair when a cell does divide, but there really is completely different information that we do find on the X and on the Y chromosome.
So these ones here again are chromosomes that are condensed chromosomes. We can visibly see them underneath the microscope. We can arrange them into the form of this karyotype, and then we can actually count them up. So we can see here that there are 22 pairs of chromosomes plus the X and the Y chromosome. So counting them all up, yes, we can see that in this case here, if I put check marks beside every single one of these, I would have 46. Again, that is what we really do want if we're talking about a human. They sometimes show these chromosomes um, in different ways. So the picture on the left-hand side, they're calling this a simple chromosome. So this is a chromosome that they're trying to show that it has not duplicated yet. So whenever a cell divides, whether it's through mitosis or meiosis, the very first thing that has to happen is duplication of the chromosomes, which is also referred to as replication. So the way that's going to work is this one here, this long continuous strand of DNA, this chromosome, is going to act as a template to make another one which is exactly the same. So if we do have this one here, that was used to make this one here, what I now have is a duplicated chromosome. So these duplicated chromosomes where one is used to make the other one, initially they're held together in the center. And sometimes they do represent it as it is shown here as kind of an X-shaped structure. But you need to realize that just because it is an X-shaped uh, structure, that does not mean that this is the X chromosome. So sometimes they will show karyotypes like this, which does show the duplicated chromosomes. In fact, whenever you're taking a look at a karyotype, the chromosome does have to be condensed and it does have to be duplicated. So this is a similar picture, only what they're trying to show here is that this one here, was used to make this one, that is a duplicated chromosome, and the other one, which is of the same chromosome number, which would have come from the other parent, that one has also been duplicated. But again, these are not X chromosomes. The only X chromosome that we have here is the one that's at the lower right-hand side. And again, because this is an X and a Y chromosome, because there is a Y, this would also be a karyotype for a male. A little more language around the chromosomes. So when we do take a chromosome and we duplicate it, we still call that duplicated chromosome one single chromosome. So we start with one chromosome, we completely duplicate the amount of the information. We have twice as much DNA, twice as much genetic information, but as long as they're still held together, we still consider it one single chromosome. So in this picture here, the picture on the left-hand side, what we do have is, well, it could be this one here was the original one. And from that original one, there was another one that was made from it. Because we are using one as a template to make the other one, they're going to end up being identical. Now, they do mention a couple of other terms in this picture here as well. Um, the caps, the tips of the chromosomes, whether it's here or here, or at the bottom, those are referred to as the telomeres. The central portion where the two different portions of this duplicated chromosome are held together, right in the middle here, holding the two sides, that is referred to as the centromere. And from the centromere, it might be a little bit shorter on one side than the other, so not that big of a deal, but the one that is shorter going from the centromere to the telomere, that is called the short arm, and the other one is, well, of course, simply referred to as the long arm. So once we do have this duplicated chromosome, once again, it is still called one single chromosome, but we call each half of it a chromatid. So we already saw chromatin, that long stringy beads on the string DNA that we find when a cell is not dividing during interphase. This one here is the ID ending, chromatid. When we use the term chromatid, that is one half of a duplicated chromosome. So if we take a look at these two chromosomes, the one on the left and the one on the right, they are of the same chromosome number. And if they are of the same chromosome number, even though they did come from different parents, let's just say that this is chromosome number one. 
It came from the father. And this one here is chromosome number one. It came from the mother. So this would be our chromosome pair. This would be a diploid cell. But your mother and father are not identical. If we take a look at these chromosomes, what we do find, if you look at the letters, the chromosome on the left, chromosome number one from the father, has genetic instructions, capital A, capital B, and capital B. So what these letters are representing are discrete pieces of information that are found at specific locations on a given chromosome, and that's referred to as a gene. So genes are always found for a particular trait. Genes are found on the same chromosome in the same location. So here we have the A gene, which is at the top of the short arm, the B gene, which is close to the centromere, and the C gene, which is toward the end of the long arm. Now, if we take a look at the other half, the other chromosome number one coming from the other parent, notice that they actually do have exactly the same genes. There is the A gene, there is the B gene, and there is the C gene. So when we talk about the same chromosome number, they will have the same genes and they will be in exactly the same location. But if you take a close look at these letters, what we do see is that from the parent on the left, they're all capital letters. The one on the right, well, the first one's a capital letter, but the other two are lowercase. So what these lowercase compared to the capital do represent are different versions of the same gene. So even though they are the same gene for the same trait, there can be different versions. So to give a simple example, hair color. So there might be a gene for hair color, and maybe that is gene number B. This is where you find the instructions for hair color. On both chromosomes from both parents, that's where the instructions are. But that doesn't mean it needs to be exactly the same information. It's the same gene, but different versions of the gene are what are referred to as alleles. So in this particular example, with the chromosome number one from the father and from the mother, we see that they have all the same genes on this chromosome. And in fact, they have the same alleles for the A gene, but they have different alleles for both the B and for the C gene as well. Now at the top, not only do I have the term chromatid, I also have sister and non-sister chromatids. Sister chromatids mean that they are identical. The only way that they can be identical is if you used one to make the other one. If you do have chromatids that are held together, the centromere, that means that they are identical. So these two that we're taking a look at here, they would be sister chromatids. If we take a look at the ones on the right-hand side, this one is connected to this one. And if we take a look at the letters, they're exactly the same. Capital, capital, lowercase, 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 lowercase. These two here as well are sister chromatids. They are the same chromosome. When we take a look at the chromosome on the left, they're attached together, they're identical. But let's take a look now at this chromatid and this chromatid. They, so they come from the same chromosome, but they're different versions. So these chromatids here, we call them non-sister chromatids. So sister means they are identical, they're attached by the centromere. One was used as a template to make the other. Non-sister, they're not attached by the centromere, and they're not identical. So this is just going back to emphasize once again the, the language in terms of different parts of the chromosome. So this one here again is a condensed chromosome. 
only time you're going to see this is when the cell is dividing. So here it is showing the nucleus and we're seeing a whole bunch of these chromosomes. And if this were a human cell, we would be able to arrange them. We would be able to count them. We should be able to count 46 of them and arrange them into a karyotype, arranging them into pairs and making sure that there are two of each. So it does say here that this is a cell during prophase and prophase is just one of the different phases when a cell is dividing. That's when you see the duplicated chromosome. Again, what are the different parts? In the duplicated chromosome, we have the entire chromosome. This is one single chromosome that we do have here. At the ends, at both ends, we do have the telomeres. The two halves are the chromatids, and not only that, they are the sister chromatids, and they're held together by the centromere. That's the important language for you to understand in terms of the condensed chromosome. So a little bit more just to emphasize again that when we are talking about a particular chromosome, they do always have the same genes, the same gene position, and the same gene arrangement. So this one here just has a whole bunch of different genes that are listed on the chromosome on the left-hand side. And what it is saying is that this is the location where you do find the genes that are for all of these different traits. So eye color and hair color and skin color and nose size and so on and so on and so on. So if we do have the chromosome on the left-hand side that's from one parent, the one on the right-hand side that's from another parent, we would have those genes in exactly the same location, but they can be, again, different versions or different alleles because they are coming from different Finally, a little bit more language. So when we talk about those two chromosomes together that are of the same chromosome number, we do refer to those as homologous chromosomes. So homologous chromosomes are the two that make up the pair. One is coming from, well, in this case, I'll put the father on the side coming from the father, this one coming from the mother. So these two together, they are homologous chromosomes. When they're duplicated, well, we still call them homologous chromosomes. And now it has labeled on here as well our sister chromatids on the ones that are attached together. The non-sister chromatids would be if we were comparing these ones. A couple more terms. What about if we talk about one half of the homologous pair? Well, we can call it a chromosome, or we can also call it a homologue. And the final term, so we do start with a cell that says diploid, that has two copies of each chromosome. This is where it gets kind of strange. We do have DNA replication or DNA duplication. So you would think once you duplicate it, that you would have, well, four, that you would have four in, but you don't. So as long as they are held together by a centromere, we still call it one single chromosome. So this is the unduplicated chromosome here. You duplicate it, we still call it one chromosome. As soon as they separate, then we can refer to them as individual chromosomes on their own. When we do duplicate the information though, we do go from having two copies of the information to having four copies of the information. So even though we do still call it diploid, we do have four copies. So when we do line up these two homologous duplicated chromosomes, we also refer to this as a tetrad, which really does just mean that now we have four copies of the information that you would find on this particular chromosome.